Hey Freebs Nation, Jordan Page with FunCheaperFree.com here and today we're gonna talk about bringing home a puppy. Oh, a big puppy like you, Will. Yes, we are. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, yes. Yeah. For those of you who don't know and who don't follow me on Instagram, you might not know that we brought home a puppy. Oh, this is Rome. Rome as in Italy, because that's where I first fell in love with the breed, which is Bernese Mountain Dog. Hello, Rome. We are obsessed with him. We absolutely love him. And when we lost our sweet yellow lab, Ollie, we waited a long 930 days before getting the dog that I've always wanted, which is this this big guy right here. But this video is more about for those of you who are considering getting a dog in general, whether it's an adopted dog, an adopted puppy, or a bred puppy. And so I wanna give you all of the best tips and tricks that I can think of to help you to prepare and afford a dog, which actually brings me to my very first tip, which is educate yourself before getting a dog. Make sure you know what kind of commitment you're getting yourself into. All too often, I have friends or family members that say, oh, we've got a yard, let's get a dog. But what they don't think about is that bringing home a dog is a lifelong commitment meaning for the life of your dog. Please take the time to check into the breed, check into your circumstances, your finances, to make sure that when you bring home a dog that you can commit to being their family for the rest of their life. And remember, puppies grow up. So if you want a puppy because you think they're so cute and so great, just remember they don't save puppies for long. So with that tip comes the question that we get asked a lot, which is when is it right to adopt and when is it right to shop? Now this is a very loaded question. You absolutely have to do the work yourself, but let me say this. Rome is the first dog that we shopped for, which means I did research on the breed, the temperament, all of that, and I chose that breed very specifically versus adopting, which is typically where you adopt a dog based on opportunity. Maybe you find him and he's a stray. Maybe you get the dog from a shelter. I believe in both circumstances and I cannot wait to adopt again someday. But now that my family has kids, we have learned through our own process of adopting dogs that for us, we really wanted to be able to choose the temperament, the breed, and the medical history because we have so many babies in our home. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it, but I will say this. For those of you who shop, please look for a reputable breeder. Here are a couple of quick tips to tell if your breeder is reputable or not. For one, make sure your breeder has a website. You want them to be actively posting photos and updates. Reputable breeders have nothing to hide. Check to see if that breeder is breeding multiple kinds of dogs or whether they specialize. The breeder that I got Rome from is Cara. Cara's canines all the way out in Ohio and I did a lot of research on her. What I love is that she only breeds Bernese so she knows the breed. I know it's not just like a puppy mill situation where she gets as many female dogs as possible and just pumps out puppies. So go visit the breeder. Go check out the site. Go check out the puppies. Go check out the moms and the dads. Make sure they look healthy. If you get to the breeder and they tell you to wait and bring the puppies to you, that is oftentimes a red flag that again, that that breeder has something to hide. So just really do your research and make sure that if you are going to choose the breed and if you want to bring home a puppy, that you're doing it responsibly and in the right way. If you are adopting a dog, I will link to some great articles that give you tips on how to adopt a dog and integrate that dog into your family because there's a lot to it. But I know for me, a couple of things that we looked at is number one, how do they behave around strangers? Number two, how anxious are they in their kennel? Are they aggressive? Ask the people who work there who interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis and they can give you just some good insight. So again, I cannot stress this enough, just do your research. Another thing you should think through before bringing home a dog is the financial aspect. Look, I'm just gonna say it. Do not go into debt for a puppy, okay? If you are buying a puppy, they can be extremely expensive, especially the purebreds. And even adopting a dog, there's a lot of expenses, medical expenses, vet expenses, food, vitamins, toys. And then if you're a family that works or travels, then you need to pay a dog walker or a boarding house. It really adds up. So don't think that you just buy the puppy and bring home the puppy and that's it. Start setting money aside in a separate bank account. If you guys have followed me for long, you've probably seen my seven bank accounts video. The more more bank accounts you have, the more organized your money is, I promise. Just watch the video link below and it will explain everything. I recommend opening a dog account. Set aside a little bit of money every single month, almost like a puppy insurance. And that's the account that you can draw from when you need to take your dog to the vet. Or heck, if they rip up the carpet at the top of your stairs and you have to replace the entire upstairs carpet like we had to with Ollie when he was a puppy. Once you have the money saved up, that's when you go get the dog, not the other way around. Do not put a dog on a credit card. For more budgeting tips like this, I 
I walk through it in great detail in budgetbootcamp.com. You can use the code YouTube for 10% off. All right, let's talk about dog must-haves. I'm gonna start off with puppy pads because these are a little controversial. Some people swear by them and love them dearly. Some people absolutely hate them. I would say that I'm in the middle. When we travel with a dog, these really come in handy. For example, on an airplane, what do you do when your dog needs to go to the bathroom, right? You can go into the bathroom, set this on the floor, and take your dog potty right there. These are really great for emergencies. The reason that I don't use them here at home is because I've got a puppy and that puppy tears up everything and these are prime real estate for being ripped to shreds. I don't know, do you guys use puppy pads or not? Leave it in the comments below and let me know. All right, so when it's time to bring home your new dog, there are a few things to consider. And number one is how are you getting that dog home? If you are traveling to get your dog, whether by plane or by car, you will most likely need a little dog carrier. One thing to consider is if you are flying to get your dog, they are extremely special specific about the size carrier that you are allowed to have on a plane. And it's very different from airline to airline. You can find these carriers on Amazon or you can find them at pet stores. My tip for you is to just really read the guidelines and regulations. For potty training, aside from treats, another thing that's helpful is to consider bell training your dog. This is available at pretty much any pet store or even on Amazon. And it's a bell that goes on the handle of your door so that when your dog needs to go to the bathroom, you train your dog to ring the bell to let you know that it needs to go outside. A Along with bathroom is poop bags. You obviously gotta have poop bags. Be a good dog owner. It does not matter how small your dog is. Pick up your dog's poop. We believe in kennel training our puppies. It is so helpful and so handy for your dog, especially your puppy, to be very comfortable in a kennel. So if you're having a party or guests over that are afraid of dogs or if they just need a quiet place to tuck away, then they have a kennel that feels safe and warm and cozy and familiar to them and not like a punishment. Here are some tips for a kennel. Number one, you need to make sure you're thinking through your dog as a full-size dog and not just as a puppy. By the way, we have a trampoline in our kitchen. Yes, that's what you're seeing. And his favorite place in the whole world is under the trampoline. Hi, Romy. He right now is small. Well, he's big for a puppy, but you know what I'm saying. But he's going to get upwards of 120 pounds or more. We got him a kennel that is huge, but that is recommended for his full grown size. As a puppy though, especially a potty training puppy, this can feel very expansive and overwhelming. We love finding a kennel that has a divider. It's essentially an extra little wall, if you will, that divides the kennel. When we first brought him home, we had it toward the front and then we continually move it back as he gets bigger. I got this from Amazon and I will link mine below. So again, check that out. Speaking of leash, let's talk walking your dog and exercise. Warning, here comes a little bit of a soapbox. You guys, the difference between a well-behaved dog and not is walking your dog. Some of you might be watching this and disagreeing with me and that's okay. Dogs need exercise. You might say, oh, but my dog is tiny, or we have a big yard, they have a great time. I get that. That's kind of like saying, that's okay, I'll have a kid because I have a TV and my kid could just sit in front of the TV all day and watch it. Yes, your dog might be entertained by just walking around the house or hanging out in your yard. Yes, your kid might be entertained sitting and watching TV for six hours straight, but it does not create the best behaved dog. They are not living their best life. They are not under their best circumstances when they don't get regular walks. Yes, it's about exercise, but more more than that, it's about mental stimulation. It's about smelling the smells. It's about peeing on things. It's about interacting with other dogs. Even if it's only five minutes and you only get half a block and back, that does more for them than sitting in your backyard wood all day long, no matter how many times you throw a ball for them. Please, please, please walk your dog. I promise it makes a difference. Stepping off my soapbox now. You definitely are going to need a collar and be sure to get your dog an ID tag that has your dog's name and then your phone number and address on the back. I recommend getting a harness. This is our little puppy harness. I love these retractable leashes. It snaps back and you can lock it, but these are fabulous. Oh, hello, my baby. He thinks we're going on a W-A-L-K. When he was a little puppy, that was a little too intense. So just these little inexpensive rope leashes are great too. These are also good emergency leashes. We always have one in our car. When you bring home a dog, especially a puppy, you've got to have toys. And if you're bringing home a puppy, they need to be chew toys. They're too young for rawhide bones, so make sure you have squishy, chewy, noisy toys because trust me, if it's not chewing on toys, it's chewing on your furniture or your feet or your carpet or anything else they can get its hands on, including poopy diapers. Learn that the hard way. We bought a big pack of chewable toys from Amazon. They were really inexpensive and those have worked great for us. There are certain toys that release food or treats which can really keep them occupied, especially when they're anxious. I recommend 
recommend something like this. This is a Kong. They have various sizes. You can fill it with peanut butter or treats. They have to chew it and bounce it and step on it and stomp it. And it really uh, gets them excited, but takes a long time for them to get to the treat, which is a great way to occupy their brain and their mouth. There's another toy that I will link below from Amazon that's really cool for puppies. They pat it around and it just kind of wobbles and balances and once in a while will shoot out like a little doggy treat. Another thing you definitely need are treats. Treats are so important when you're training a dog. You need some incentive as you train them. You want everything you do to be a positive reinforcement. When you put on the leash for the first time, when they learn to sit, everything they do that's positive, you want to reward with a treat. This is an absolute must have for a puppy especially or any dog that's in training. And that is a doggy gate or a doggy play pen. It's a gate that can circle up like a play pen and you can clip it together or you can extend it kind of like this and it becomes Becomes like a baby gate. It is extremely important that you do not let your puppy roam your whole house. You have to introduce your house a little bit at a time to your puppy or else they will pee and poop and chew on everything and it will be so much harder to train them. Okay, just ignore all this. We had a birthday party today and I'm still cleaning it up. But for Rome, who's over there, he has earned the privilege of exploring this entire space all on his own. I keep his kennel in there with the door open. I find that if I give him a bone to chew on or a toy, he loves to go chew on it in his kennel where it's kind of like a safe space and my kids won't take it from him. Poor little guy. Go ahead, hello, my buddy. Puppy shampoo. We have a variety of kinds that we use and enjoy. If you have a puppy, be sure to use a puppy shampoo. It's more mild on their sensitive skin. Just kind of do your research, whether your dog has fur or whether your dog has hair, that does make a difference. You know, for us, we, there's a few kinds that we really like. Let's talk about food and water in general. This is a Bubba favorite here that he insists on, and that is an automatic feeder or dispenser. Disclaimer, some dogs cannot regulate their own food. They will overeat, so you do have to measure out their food. There are electric feeders that do do that. You can actually set how many cups, how often per day. It even has like a webcam on it, so you can talk to your dog while you're at work. My brother and sister-in-law have one. It's very fancy, I will find it link it below. For us, we have a breed of dog that does not need to be self-regulated. So we got this little automatic feeder and we just use the inexpensive puppy food from Costco. It checked out to be great for him and his type of dog. To water your dog, you want a nice weighted dog bowl that the dog will not tip over easily. So I do recommend that the heavy metal ones with like kind of a pad on the bottom or a sticky bottom. You can get these at pretty much any pet store. There are automatic water feeders just like this one. Unfortunately, the one that we have is huge and he just doesn't rotate through the water quickly enough. So for now, as a puppy, we're just using a bowl and as he gets bigger, we will do the automatic feeder because he will drink several gallons a week. Last but not least, an absolute must have for puppies specifically, but it really doesn't hurt for any pet at all, is a carpet cleaning machine. I have tried every store-bought carpet cleaner on the planet and from my experience, they do not work. Years ago, I invested in a carpet cleaning machine. I believe I bought it on Amazon even back then, but I do know it's available on Amazon now and I will link it below. You put hot water and some solution in it, you turn it on, you spray it on the spot, you scrub it in a little bit with this little brush that's attached, and then you suction it up. And the suction is really the key. What you need is really good suction to get it up and this does great. So there you go, those are my tips for bringing home a dog. What are yours? Will you please share in the comments below. And listen, for those who need some help with budgeting or with getting your life organized or setting up good systems for your family, be sure to check out my two programs. I've got budgetbootcamp.com and productivitybootcamp.com. Use the code YouTube to get 10% off of either. Now, if you don't mind, I gotta go because my toddler is feeding my doggy and that goes against everything we're training him to do right now. So I gotta go put a kibosh on this, but Romy, say bye-bye. See you later, everybody. See you later. He's literally just sitting in the sprinkler and loving it. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's getting a bath on his own. <laughs>